Garrison Little Theater. Thank you for being here. Uh, I see lots of familiar faces in the audience tonight, so thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting community theater. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. I just want to go over some housekeeping rules. If you have a cell phone, please turn it off or turn it to silence as it can be distracting to others around you and the actors on stage. Uh, we will be using this. This is like the Lion King. I don't know if you've ever seen the Lion King. It's very immersive. There's going to be actors walking through this space. If it's a little crowded, they'll find somewhere else to walk, but just be mindful of that, okay, folks? And don't trip any of this. <laughs> So, uh, hello sir, how are you? Uh, so theater is a powerful art form, whether it is professional theater or community theater. And I want to give you an example of that. So in 1972, a group of actors from Toronto went to the small town of Clinton, Ontario to study farming because they wanted to write a play about it. And Farmer uh, Ray Bird gave up his barn as a venue, and they staged the first ever production of The Farm Show. <laughs> and if you don't know what The Farm Show is, that's okay. But it was uh, revolutionary in Canadian theater because, for a few reasons. One, it was a time where actors were working together, writing new Canadian plays, which is obviously important, right? And it was the start of the Blythe Festival, which was just down the road from Clinton. So during Michael Healy's time working at the Blythe, he got to know some of the locals that housed these actors from Toronto, that saw the original farm show, and that influenced him to write a fictional play based on those real events that happened in 1972. So, without further ado, Garrison Little Theater is proud to present the Drawer Boy.
I'm, I'm, I'm here with a group of actors. We're making up a play about farmers. Oh. Yes, um, I'm wondering, could I help out here in any way? We really <laughs> want to spend time... We're with... farmers. Yes. Um, could I help out here for the next couple of weeks? Free of charge, we just need a place to stay and, and a chance to watch you. Watch me? Yes. Watch me what? Well, whatever it is you do all day. As a farmer. As a farmer. Yes. I better ask Morgan. Yeah, I don't. 
You know how it works with the cows? Milk the cows, milk goes to the dairy, dairy gives us money. Okay, how? You bet. But, um, but what's that like? I mean, um, what's, uh, what do cows feel about, um, you know, being interfered with twice a day? How do they feel?
leaf spleen? Uh, sure, uh, a small one. Anyway, we got too much to do this afternoon. 
Nothing uh, dangerous, I hope. Nah, ever got anything? What, like like cut cut the guts out of something? Uh-huh. Do you know how to use a chainsaw? <laughs> no, no, sir, I don't. Oh, nothing to it. Just remember to hold on real tight when things get slippery. <laughs> are, you, are you sure that it's a good idea? I, I mean, after the tractor. Probably not. But there'll be no molly coddling on this part when there's work to be done. Plus, I'll stand well back. <laughs> They're not going to believe this at rehearsal. Pardon me. Hello. Someone got hit by the, the, the car, right? Hey, I guess you should be in bed. Yeah. Hello, who are you? Hello, Angus. My name is Miles. I'm staying here with you and Morgan to learn about farming. He looks like uh, standing there, uh, the girl, right? Uh, you head on up. I'll meet you over in the barn. Sir. Sure. <laughs> right? Angus, your head hurt? Well, yeah. Well, upstairs then. Okay. Okay, hello, Miles. 
You hungry? Fella? I was just out helping Morgan with the hay bales. I must have hauled 600 of the damn things off the wagon and onto the escalator thing. What? You know, the thing that takes the bales up to the top of the barn. Oh, yeah, that's called the, um, the only way to do that is to sort of drag them off the wagon and throw them onto the escalator using your leg. Look! Look at my legs! That's something. Oh. Morgan looks at me and says, folks wear long pants around the farm. Oh. I'll, I'll bet this is infected. Oh. <laughs> Help, help yourself. Oh, and then, and then I have to go up into the barn to stack the bales, and that's even worse, because there's no air up there. Lots of dust, <coughs> but, but no air. And I just have to pick up the bales, flip, flip them over my head, and, and stack them up. Want a sandwich? I've done hard things, Angus. I played a hedgehog in a show about a group of dead animals. <laughs> that show was three hours long. I didn't move. <laughs> I've done hard things. And I was about to quit. No, not with Morgan watching. So, so I just kept on stacking them, dragging them over to the side of the barn. I, I built a wall of hay. Look at my hands. Splinters inside of exploded blisters. Yeah, that's something, all right. Oh. The twine, city boy. Pick them up by the twine. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be writing a play. Was it hay or straw you were looking? I don't know. What's the difference? Between hay and straw? Yeah. Well, when you eat and when you sleep in. What are you, stupid? <laughs> Thanks. Forget which, though. <laughs> Angus, do you, uh, do you think Morgan's still upset with me over the thing with the tractor? Do you? You know, I, I ran him down with the tractor two mornings ago, if you remember. Uh, nope. Tractor, huh? It, it's okay, Angus. Never mind. Somebody got hit by the tractor? Angus, it's fine. Just forget it. You bet. <laughs> Angus, what is that? Oh, that's the, uh, uh, the, 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 nope. Is, is that the refrigerator? That's it. Or the stove? Uh, Morgan. We better ask Morgan. Oh, it's okay. That's the, uh, the table. Uh, table? Or the chair. Chair? Angus, what's my name? Don't you know? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, then. Uh, my name is Miles, Angus. Miles. Oh, okay. Angus. 12, 56, 107, 12 again, and 679. Uh huh. What's my name? Oh. Uh. <laughs> okay. Well, what about those those numbers? Can you add them up? 866. Right. I think that's right. Oh yes. How old are you? Oh, about your age. <laughs> Uh, is, is Morgan our age too? No, he's an old fella. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever fight in the war? Yes, I did. Sure. Princess Pats. Went to France, went to England, went to Morgan. What did you have for breakfast this morning? <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> and, and what's what's my name? <laughs> my name is Miles, Angus. <laughs> Tell me, tell me about your head. Oh, it hurts. 
sometimes, always. How, how'd you heard it? Do you remember? Oh, uh, Morgan. He, he says they were waiting. Hey, what's your name? Don't you know? Uh, don't know. Don't know. He didn't, didn't tell me. Angus. Me too. My name's Angus too. <laughs> no, Angus. You're, you're, did you hurt your head in London? No, and, no, and no. Vomit no, by, no. By a front door. Front? No. No, no, no. I did not. Do you? Do you not remember, or or is it just what Morgan tells you? Morgan knows. He knows. He tells me. I, uh, the drawer boy, the the tall girls, and they. Uh, hey, Morgan. Come on. How did I get hurt? Was it the front door? Was it what? I mean, he said. He said you said. Um, hush. No, no, no. Now, uh, was it the front door? No, no. Or hush. No, no. The the tall girl. Did they? Hey, make me a sandwich. Uh-huh. What the hell have you been doing? Well, I just asked him a few questions about the war, about his head. I bet you came here to learn about farming. Well, yes, but I... You don't know what you're doing asking him questions like that. I told you his memory's faulty. If he gets upset, he'll be in bed all day and I'll have to do all the work myself. If you want to know anything about the farm, I'll answer them. About farming. Stick to the cows and the chickens, and if you can't do that, then you're gonna to have to leave. You understand that? Yes. Sir, I'm sorry. Angus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about what just happened. It's okay. Me too. What just happened? <laughs> well, I asked you about your head. For God's sake, it's nothing! Sorry.
I make a little on the belt. That kind of evens things up with the eggs. The rest of the debt I put over to next year until the year I get paid what my crops are worth. Of course, that year will never come. Public complaints about us. They think we farmers are making a killing. Politicians complain about us, tired of giving us subsidies that just get us over to the next year. Maybe kids are leaving the farms, moving to Toronto. Nobody wants to do this anymore, and soon nobody will. Orville, why do you shout? Farms in a strip from winter to Montreal produce 40% of the food for this country, and soon it will all stop. Then you'll find out how much a food costs when you have to import everything. Just wait. You'll see how much a pound of steak will go for. You go to university? Yeah. What did you study? Um, English and drama, uh, political science and geology, and law and French, phys ed, and, and a little bit of Latin. Uh -huh. Graduate? Well, I, I lived in this place called uh, Rochdale College, and, and the point wasn't really to graduate. We thought that we should be able Did to... Did you run up a student debt? Yeah. How much? $2,000? Well, that's a little personal. More than $3,000? It ended up being about $3,600 altogether. Oh, there you go. Government gave you more money than I think myself the past four years. 1968, 867. 1969, 905. 1970, 704. 1971, 790. Let's all write that down. I make as much as anyone else around here, but they don't need to hear the exact figures from the stage. Can I use the figures going to pound the stage? Wish you would. This is going to blow people's minds in rehearsal. You know, we just go to the grocery store, buy some fruit or, or a steak. Don't even think about where it comes from. Have you ever thought about starting up a communal farm? Hey. Have you ever studied the Soviet model? Uh, they've been farming community for decades in Russia, and the results are incredible. Goddamn communists. Uh, productivity is up. The people all have enough to eat. Uh, money is just not Goddamn hard. communists. Anybody who looks at it can see that it's the wave of the future. Who are your neighbors to the north? Lobs, Don and Allison Lobb. What if the fence came down between your two properties? Well, what if you and the Lobbs agreed that from now on you, you both work the fields, take turns, uh, maybe even sell one of the tractors? You really only need the one. One barn for all the animals. An equal division of labor, materials, and profit. God damn corn! Why are you shouting? Was it? How's the bread coming? Done. Good. Miles, I'm going to ask you a question. And this answer is going to have a bearing on where you sleep tonight. How comfortable the place it is. Is it a place for humans normally? Or is it a place where our furred and feathered friends normally lay their heads? A place that smells a bit. Miles, how would you describe yourself politically? Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm an actor. We don't, we don't have politics. I think that's best.
anybody that the cows are petrified all the time. They want to do your stereotypical cow. You know, placid, dumb, cut chewing, bourgeois theatrical cow. The cow that we've seen on stage for years and years, and, and which I now know is a lie. I said, if you want to do a scene about a cow that's a lie, we could have stayed in Toronto and, and made it up off the top of our heads. I, I said, I was not going to insult Daisy by portraying her without exploring her pain, her, her anxiety, her reality. The director said, okay, fair enough. And then he cut the scene. How <laughs> great. Yeah. So far, they aren't using anything I brought to rehearsal. Do you remember the other day we stacked all those hay bales? I made up a dance. The, the dance of the hay bale stacker. It got cut too. Let me ask you something. Hey, just lie down. Oh, hello. Lie down if you're gonna look at them stars. You'll hurt your neck again. You bet. <laughs> what happens if none of the things you make up get put into play? Uh, I guess they have to kick me out of the collector. Oh, so if you don't produce, you die. <laughs> That's right. Well, there you go. You got something in common with my cows there. Uh -huh. Got something in common with me. If I don't produce, I go as sure as you and the cows do. Right on. C can I use that? Sure. <laughs> you know, I, I think I'm going to go upstairs and try to put this into some kind of shape for rehearsal. Well, you better rest up. We gotta rotate the crops tomorrow. Really? Is that a big job? Uh huh. We have to take all the hay that's growing in the east field, the hay that gets the morning sunlight, and move it over to the west field to get the afternoon sun. Big job. And we have to do it in the dark. Set your alarm for three. Three a.m. Uh huh. I don't want to have to call you. Okay, I'll be ready. See you in that jar. Hey, just bread right in the oven. You bet. Don't forget. Ah. How many? 
And when they were done talking, they got ready to come home. One night during an air raid, the drawer boy was outside. The two tall English girls and his friend were staying inside of the butler's pantry in an old and empty house. They lit candles and they made jokes about where the drawer boy was. He was down the street looking at another house, probably staring at the wrought iron, memorizing the smoke of the roof. The front door blew off when a shell hit, and the drawer boy watched come for him. The doctor took two and a half inches of copper plate out of the boy's head from the front door knocker. They put in 26 millimeters of stainless steel, but before they could sew the wound up, the boy's memory escaped. His hair grew back, and his three friends slowly put his memory back to him. One day he woke up and he knew right from left and up and down. And one day he woke up and he remembered he loved the taller English girl. They got ready to come home again. They talked about their plans again. They showed the drawer the picture of the house all four would live in. Pictures he drew before the door came for him. He didn't remember drawing them, but he agreed to the plan. They would come home. There would be a double wedding. There was enough money to buy a single piece of land. The house would be built on a farm that they would share. There would be two houses joined. Two families would be started. Life would begin for the four friends. They came home. They bought a piece of land. They started, they had the double wedding. The draw boy recited the poem from a book he stole. They bought the piece of land, they started to build the house, and they bought a car. They bought an old black car, right? The taller girl liked to drive. One day she and the tall girl went in the car to a very much that the farmer boy had shown them. They were coming back. They had two pails of raspberries in the seat between them. <coughs> they knew what side of the road to drive on. They did. An old army transport came over the hill on their side of the road. Coming right after them, they were passing a horse. The taller girl turned, turned her side of the car into the transport because she knew it wouldn't miss. Her side of the car was just ruined. Not a scratch on the tall girl's side, but the tall girl died too. Right, my Sally, my Sally, your by Francis. Then the two English girls went to a hill, together in a carriage pulled by a horse. The hill's the highest place in the county. That's where they are now. Then it was the two friends. The drawer makes bread and adds up figures in his head. And the farmer farms, heads to the place on the hill. Right. Morgan, I smell bread. You do? Are you okay? How's your head? No, no. I, I smell bread. Oh, Jesus!
shot their guns in the air and sang war songs. They had three, three boots between them. In England, they met two girls, one tall and one taller. Taller. Thank you. 
driving that fella and them two girls because they were the tractor. And then that uh, fella, he's, he's telling them about how the tractor breaks down and you gotta get the arms in. And, and then you gotta stay awake when you're going over hills and the like. And that fella sitting on the other fella's shoulders and he's driving the tractor while he's talking away to us. That was exactly right. Uh -huh. oh, and then, then that girl, she came out and she said she was, uh, Oh, oh, um, oh, oh, that's it. Do you know, for the longest time there, I thought that was Alice in Love. I thought, good Lord, Alice in Love lost her senses and got up on the stage and was talking to us. It wasn't, though, you know. That was an actress. I Acting. know. Yeah. Oh, I laughed. <laughs> oh, oh, and then my... And then, Miles comes out. Then with that story about the two, two English girls and the, the war and all. And then he's talking in that funny voice. And all of a sudden, I realized, it's you. <laughs> he's pretending to be you. That's how I knew every word as he was saying it. Oh, he, he said it just the way you do. Oh, I remembered everything just as it was coming out. And then I, I could have said it along with it. Hey, shit, that other fella, the, the simple looking fella he was talking to, that was me. <laughs> the one fella was you and the other one was supposed to be me. That was us. That was us. <laughs> he got us, didn't he, Miles? He got us. He certainly did. He did. Oh, I'll never forget it. Oh, I can't wait till everybody And gets just make me a sandwich. Okay. Well, that, that's 
just silly. He can't go now. Just got here. He's leaving. Why? <laughs> because of what I said in the show. What do you have? The, the story about the two tall Jewish girls. Morgan doesn't want me to use it. Oh. Well. Shit, that's not a story. That's us. You gotta use that. Tough job. 
So what? Um, oh, you, your stepfather. Did you kill him? Oh, well, not right away. See, my girlfriend's brother comes home. He's mad because she killed herself. So we have a couple of sword fights. Everybody takes some drugs, sort of by accident, and then everybody dies. Everybody dies by accident? Sort of. Sort of hell of an accident. Yeah. And then I die too. Well, she hopes <laughs> Did they clap? Oh yeah. Oh, people loved it. The, the people that saw it, the critics hated it. Why? I don't know. They, they said I was too Canadian. Well, <laughs> that makes sense. Or, how about he went mad? Yeah, you know what this is? This is a short handled insulate fork. After you finish washing the gravel, I want you to muck out the cow stalls using this. Cows have been eating corn lately, and not all the corn gets digested. We use this to retrieve the undigested corn and we put it in a bucket. Then we feed the chicken for four to five corn. You understand me? Yeah. Good.
Once there were two boys. Once there were two boys. Two friends. They grew up together. They played hockey together. They did everything together. Two friends played hockey and, and everything. One boy drew pictures. One boy drew pictures. The drawer boy. Yes. Drew pictures of a cow. Inside and out. Lots of pictures. Then they built the cabin. Drawer boy drew a cabin inside and out. Then they stole nails and played hooky and built the cabin. Right. Then they went off to war together. Then they went off to war together. They yelled together and sang together when it was loudest. They had three boots between them. They, they, they fired up in the air and together and hid and sang together when it got loud and the three boots. In England, they met two girls. One tall and one taller. The taller one liked the drawer. And the tall girl liked Morgan. <coughs> like me. <laughs> the tall girl and the farmer would talk all night. The taller girl and the drawer would walk and talk all night. The one girl would talk to the other boy about the boy she liked, so would the other girl to the other boy. They talked. <laughs> when they were done talking, their plans were as complete as something the one boy would draw. When they were done talking, they had a picture of the next thing they would build together, the four of them. They came home, there was a double wedding. Uh, Angus, uh, next is the air raid. Remember the, the front door flying? Uh-huh. But I don't want to. Okay. He came home. They had a double wedding. He, he told the stolen poem. And they, they started to build the house. Right. Where? Where what? He said, you said, he said, they, they started to build the house. Where's the house? They're separate and together. I don't know. Well, he said, you said, he said, they started the house. You're right. Where? Let's ask him later. Okay. They bought a car. They bought a black car. Now, Angus, you say, my Sally. My Sally, your. My Francis. Your Sally used to love to drive the car to where the raspberries grew wild. And then a uh, horse was coming the other way, and my, your, your Sally turned. The, the, the truck was coming for my Francis, but my Sally, your Sally, Sally, uh, turned her side into the truck to save her friend, Angus. Your Sally tried to save Francis. She, yes. And now, it's the two friends again. And now it, no, they were taken together in a cart to the, the, the tallest point in the county, buried there. That's right. And now, it's the two friends again. And now, never been there, the highest point in the county. I,
the two houses joined. Uh, did you 
call? Did you? I, yes, I did. You did? Jesus, you. Oh, God damn it. You set it all up. That's right, I did. You did, you bastard, you. <laughs> oh, Miles, sorry. You can't come. Uh, the, the girls are waiting for us. We only got the two passes. Morgan set it all up. I guess I'm, I'm sorry. This happened. What? I got passes to the two of us overnight. It was his birthday. It was a surprise. Does he remember? This is your fault. Uh, Morgan, you gotta owe me some boots. I, uh, my shoes are all wet from the ditch. Sergeant says, he, he said we, whoo, Morgan, it's too bright. All right, man, it's upstairs now. <coughs> oh, no, no, Sally, she's waiting. Cufflinks, what? You can't go like that, can you? No, not like this. Well, let's go upstairs and get your uniform on. Right. Get you that shoe. Let's, uh, hurry. Oh, hey, who are you? That's the man who did this to you.
stay here. Get you in 
side. Good. Sit down here. Let me take a look at my arm. What, what, what happened to you? It's not true. What, what you tell me isn't true. I, I heard. Are you hungry? Do you want something to eat? No, no, please. What did he mean? You haven't wandered off in a while. One time I found you up in the mound. Your one leg had got stuck in a hole. You were just there staring off. Like you're waiting for a train or something. You know, I got you out, dragged you down, and it took you all day to come back to yourself. You scared me. I mean, what were you thinking? We used to do this when we were boys. I'd find you up in a tree somewhere, staring off, and I'd yell, Angus, Angus. You'd come back to yourself, climb down, you'd ask me what day it was. used to be fun when we were kids. Now, I'm going to make you something to eat. I want you to eat. No, please, listen to me. Okay, but please, what did he mean? I, I heard. No, no, hush. I can smell you beside me, the smell of you failing it. And 
I remember France. The boy running away. You would not shoot the boy running away. And so, the first sight of her from behind in that church. Oh, God. Oh, no. I remember the. I, I, her hair, the, my finger trapped in, in the pages of that hymn book. And, and then I got hurt. Oh, God, the noise. Oh, and I'm lying on the ground. I remember a time when my head didn't hurt, I think. And, and I, I remember Wilds, who was you, on that, that stage. And then I, I remember the double wedding. You remember the double wedding? I, I do. I stood up. I said, God, with honor, hang your head, groom. And you remember getting hurt? I do. I remember the, the door the flying. I mean, the, the, the three of you safe. And then I'm coming to you, and I got stopped by the architecture. No, that's. Oh, Jesus. I remember everything. No, you don't. I do. I, I do. It came all night. I walked. I, I was looking for them. What, what you remember is the story. What he said on stage. No, I remember it. What was in your hand? My hand? What were you carrying? Nothing. I, I don't think. What you had. What you told me is what I've told you all these years. That's our story. What you were carrying in your hand was a bottle of cheap brandy given to me in a card game. I sent you to fetch it. Do you remember? We laughed about it, and I made you go get it. You were safe, Angus, and I made you go get it. Do you understand? I did that. I did that to you. That's the first thing. That's the first thing? See? You're a bastard. What do I remember? You remember the story. Oh, God. What did I get for that black car? Car? That old black car. It, it got wrecked in the, the army truck. Did it? Did it? If you're going to remember, then remember. Don't. What did I get for that car? It got wrecked. It was a selling. Turned it into the army truck. It was a number. I don't want to. What did I get for that car? $110. That's right. $110. I... From Doug Ham. It didn't crash. That's right. You sold it. You do remember. No, I don't. Angus, listen. No, what you tell me isn't true. It's not true. I heard. It is true. No, where's Miles? I want him to tell me. No, not now. Yes, now. Miles, get in here! But you said it's not true. What you tell him isn't true. He said, I lied. He lied. He's a bastard. Now, he says it's something else. You have to tell him. I, Angus Morgan will tell you. No, no, he lied. He's a bastard. You will, you know. Angus, do you, do you know what I am? I'm an actor. I, I play at things. I was playing Morgan when you saw me. But he's, he's here. He is right there, and he can tell you. No, he lied. I remember you. Listen to me. Do you know what I did just now? I was out at the barn, pretending to be a farmer. All these cows were in agony, just begging to be milked. And, and do you know what I did? I hooked the milking machine up to Daisy, and I switched it on. And she groaned, and the whole thing stopped. I broke it. I, I don't know what I'm doing, Angus. Let Morgan tell you. You broke the milking machine? Yes. Oh, Jesus. Sorry. You were right. But there's no need to rush out there. Daisy is OK. They're all OK. I milked them by hand. Yes. You milk nine cows by hand. Well, well, just a little bit each to take the pressure off. I was out there amid these, these weeping cows. I had to do something. So I sat down and got the hanger pretty fast. 
I just went from cow to cow, one after the other. Grab milk, grab milk, grab milk, grab milk. Suddenly I looked up and it was done. What did you do on the bucket dog for? I'm supposed to use a bucket. Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> See, I've I caused enough trouble. I, I have to go to a rehearsal. No, no, you, you have to tell it. I will. I will. No, no, him. Angus, no. All right, the, the both of you. I will, but not with him here. Yes, with him here. I'm scared. You're scaring me, you bastard. Sure. You can both tell it. The, 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 together, the both of you. Hey, this I got the both of you! Please! I need to match them up. I need to find myself in them. I, I'm starved, you know! Okay. Go. You start. Okay. But as him. Right. Like you did on the the thing. I got. It. Two boys played shitty, went to school and grew up. Now you. They no but as you. <laughs> We built a cabin together. You drained it off, I did all the work. Stole nails, played hooky, built a cabin. From the drawer boys pictures. You were going to go to university. Talked you out of it. War broke out of it. Talked you into volunteering with me. It was going to be a big adventure. We were so excited. No, I was excited. You were. I talked you into it. We joined up. As soon as we were over there, we were at an airfield and we saw something. A stupid accident during training. Remember? I. We watched three men burn to death. Couldn't help. It was awful. From then on, all we did was survive. We didn't volunteer for anything. We hid when things got bad. We fired our guns straight up to use up our ammunition. In, in England, they met two girls. One tall and one taller. The taller one liked the drawer, the tall one the farmer. They agreed to marry us. They agreed to come home with us. They were friends like we were friends. Four of us would spend as much time together as we could. We would talk all night before this. You and Sally would go on long walks and count the stars. She showed you how. She knew the names. She showed you how to cut up the night sky into manageable pieces for counting. That was the first thing she gave you. They made plans. By the time they were done talking, Plans are as complete as something the one boy would draw. All we had to do was finish our tour. All we had to do was keep hiding. And one night in an air raid, I, they sent you out to get a bottle of brandy and left in Sally's car. We laughed and I made you go get it. We felt we wanted to drink. We were together. We felt indestructible because, because of each other. It was like the war was just a dream. It took a long time to come back. He joked about it. I said to Sally, you found someone else. The drawer boy was down the street looking at a large house. You were crying, running like hell to get back to him. Jesus, you were laughing. Our boy watched the door come for him with a shell hit. I watched a shell hit you from behind, watched it carry you through the air. You flew right at me. You nearly died, but you didn't. You woke up, and your memory was gone. We came home, they came with us. 
There was no double wedding. Sally wanted to wait until you were better. But the double, the, the, the stolen poem. You never said it. You've been waiting all this time to say it. The house that you planned was never started. Come the plans up. Over here. To keep in what we were thinking that we'd eventually do. Eventually it just became a reminder. So one day when you were asleep, I thought you were asleep, I took them down and hit them. We did buy a car so the girls could drive to town. I mean, they were lonely. The car didn't help much. Sally looked after you. She was with you every minute, all the time. She'd watch you wander off, and she'd follow you, hiding behind trees so you wouldn't see her. You'd get lost, and Sally would bring you home. She fed you, she cleaned you, she gave you medicine from the school. You kept having headaches. They made you different, Angus. They made you mean. And because Sally was around all the time, you were mean to Sally. To Sally. One day, Sally was very tired. It was hot, hot like they never felt at home. You had another one of your headaches. She was baking, baking bread. You walked up behind her, and without saying a word, you hit her. She cried and cried, not because she was hurt that much, but because she was tired. And you looked at her and you had to ask me who that crying girl was. That's when Sally decided to leave. You Francis? They were friends. They were here alone. On the day they left, they called a taxi from town. We were upstairs asleep. I was here. I couldn't move. The taxi came and I went to help Frances with her suitcase and she said, this is the worst thing I could do to you. Don't you dare help me. She dragged the suitcase outside, snarled at the taxi driver when he tried to help her. She was crying for the effort of it. He got in the taxi. I haven't heard a word since that time. When you woke up, no, 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 when you woke up, you knew something was wrong. You went into their room, you looked in the closet, under the bed, you tore that room apart. You didn't know what you were looking for. Then you went through the whole house, searching every room, tearing it apart. Again and again, over and over again, and you just wouldn't stop. Finally, when you were racing up the stairs to start again, I tackled you, I dragged you down, and I sat you on the steps, and I told you the lie. I told you the lie about the black car crashing for the first time. I told it again, and you stopped crying. I told it again, and you fell asleep. I keep telling it because it makes you feel better. Better too. I hit my Sally, and you lost your Francis. Yes. I did that to you. God, you must hate me. I guess I did, Angus. So. That's me. He was right. You are the man who did this to me. It's, it's late. I, I should go. Go? I've got to go 
to work, to, to rehearse. Yes, you're, you're <coughs> making the... Uh, That's all right. But it's, it's just a story. I know. No, no, I mean, you can use it if you want to. Thanks. Staying with you and me while he puts on a play of farming. You told him some awful stories. Yes. Well, I guess I better go see what he did in the barn. God with honor hang your head, groom, and grace you bride your bed. With lissom science, sweet science out of hallowed bodies bred. Each be other's comfort kind, deep, deeper than divine. Hey! Thieves! The milk horse stole. He used the milking machine. He was. He was lying to us, that silly bugger. <laughs> Divine charity, dear charity, fast you ever fast bind. Then let the march tread our ears. I to him turn with tears, who to wedlock, his wonder wedlock, deals triumph and immortal years. 